Welcome to section 8 of the parasites. This is our overview figure showing the parasites you need to know for step 1. In this lecture, we will be talking about another protozoa that infects the blood, Babesia. Our story takes place in a daycare center with a bunch of babies. Here's one of the babies right here. Babies for Babesia. Babesia is spread through ticks. To help you remember this, we've included this giant tick toy right here. The babies like to jump on this toy and ride it like a horse. And to further emphasize that it's transmitted through ticks, that baby's holding this little container of Tic Tacs. And as he jumps on the giant Tic Toy, Tic Tacs fly through the air. So Tic Tacs and Tic Toy all are there to help you remember that this is transmitted through ticks. The specific type of tick is the Exodes tick. Remembering that Babesia is spread through the Exodes tick specifically is not as important as just remembering that it's spread through ticks. When the baby jumped on this Tic Toy, the toy spewed out a bunch of dust spores from inside. So basically, dust had just accumulated within this tick toy, and then it was forcefully squeezed out when the baby landed on it. These little dust spores represent sporozoites. Ticks will bite people and transmit the sporozoites of Babesia into the bloodstream. The workers at the daycare try to teach the babies a little about local geography. You can see a map up on the wall highlighting the northeastern United States. This map will help you remember that ticks carrying Babesia are mainly found in the northeastern United States. Let's go back to those dust spores forced out of the tick. The blast of the spores was so forceful that this other baby was blown back into this water trough. This water trough is where the kids wash their hands. Anyways, we like to use troughs to represent trophozoites. So this is what happens. When a tick bites a human, it transmits sporozoites. Once in the blood, those sporozoites enter red blood cells and become trophozoites. Landing in the water trough caused a remarkable splash which knocked this other baby backwards. You can see the splashed baby stagger backwards and knock that pell of red paint over. The red paint looks kind of like blood, and the fact that the paint is spilling stands for loss of blood, or anemia. When sporozoites enter red blood cells, trophozoites will form and replicate, causing death to the red blood cells, leading to anemia. The splashing water from the trough is splashing on yet another unsuspecting victim. This little baby is innocently just finger painting all over the wall. Anyways, this red paint getting smeared on the wall represents a peripheral blood spear, which is a way to detect a Babesia infection. Appreciating his fellow baby's work of art, this other baby has come over and wanted to add to it. He's added a gold cross with some gold paint. This Maltese cross found inside the red blood cells is often referred to as a ring form. This is a microscopic image of a peripheral blood smear in a patient with Babesiosis. You can see this red blood cell here in the middle and how it has this Maltese cross in the center of it. Another term you may come across is intraurethrocytic inclusions. This simply means inside the urethrocyte, which is exactly what this Maltese cross represents, an intraurethrocytic inclusion. These are also called ring forms, and this is kind of a strange term, because it looks like a cross, not a ring. To help me remember that this can be called a ring form, I like to think of four skydivers falling through the sky and holding each other's hands. And you may have seen that in videos. And that way, they kind of form a ring. So we have one skydiver, another one, another one, and another one. And all four of them are holding hands and kind of form that ring. Another way to diagnose babesiosis is through a polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. To help you remember this, we've included a baby here dangling from the ceiling by three chains. I don't know where the adults are at this daycare. Anyways, three chains stands for polymerase chain reaction. Oh, here's an adult. He's pretty distracted with his protein drink, so he's unaware of the ruckus the babies have caused behind him. What are those strange things in his drink? They're protozoa. Anyways, protein sounds like protozoa. The babesia parasite is considered a protozoan, and we add a little chunks of protozoa in there. So protein for protozoa. It looks like this guy shares his protein drinks and feeds them to the babies. Look at this baby all tuckered out after having some protein drink. Looks like the bottle lid popped off and the drink is now spilling on the floor. This sleepy baby represents the fatigue that patients with Babesia experience. It makes sense that patients would be fatigued. After all, a symptom of anemia is fatigue. The daycare center likes to keep the place warm, so they keep these heat lamps around. Those heat lamps represent fever, which is another symptom of babesiosis. When you think of fever, it's a good idea to think of the general flu-like symptoms such as malaise, headaches, and muscle aches. So again, when you think of heat lamps, think fever and flu-like symptoms. Now some of the employees of the daycare are actually pretty attentive. Like this lady here. She's busy cleaning up all the dirty diapers on the floor. This cleaning woman stands for clindamycin, which is one of the treatments for babesia. You may have noticed that crown on her head. It's made of paper and this cute little baby here has placed it on her head to make her look like a queen. It's a cute gesture, especially in the context of her cleaning up the baby's diapers. If you look at it closely, you'll see the number 9 written on it. This 9 plus the fact that she looks like a queen represents quinine. I'm intentionally mispronouncing quinine to help you remember it better. It's actually called quinine. Anyways, queen, 9, for quinine. Another treatment for babesiosis. In reality, quinine and clindamycin are given together as treatment. That's why these two ideas are represented with this single worker. So give quinine and clindamycin together. Now look at this other worker over here trying to take care of the baby on this side of the room. 
He was giving the baby an ice cream cone and accidentally spilled it on the baby's toe. A toe with an ice cream cone on it stands for atovaquone. A toe and cone for atovaquone. This is yet another treatment you can use for Babesia. Now look at this baby grasping this hanger. It's a fairly smart baby and he's created a zip line for himself using string in this hanger. That's pretty innovative. Anyways, this zip line stands for azithromycin, which is a macrolide used to treat Babesia. So zip line, azithromycin. Just like quinine and clindamycin are administered together as treatment, azithromycin and atovaquone are administered together. For this reason, the zip line and the toe with the cone are close together. So again, you can treat Babesia with azithromycin plus atovaquone together. Now this cute little baby here has some red paint on his hands. He thought it'd be funny to spread red paint on this worker's shirt. In the process, the baby inadvertently made the shape of a spleen and placed it in the area the spleen is located. The spleen mark represents the fact that the spleen is necessary for clearing the infection. In fact, asplenic patients often have a much worse presentation. So spleen spot stands for the importance of the spleen in clearing Babesia. Now that we've covered all the items in the image, let's do a question to review what you've learned. A 34-year-old asplenic patient presents to the physician due to malaise, progressive fatigue, and shortness of breath. He endorses recent hiking through a forested area in Massachusetts. His temperature is 39.0 degrees Celsius, or 102.2 Fahrenheit. The physician suspects an infection spread through an arachnid endemic to the region. After thorough skin inspection, the physician finds an exodes tick on the patient's back. Which of the following is most likely true regarding the patient's illness? A. Trophozoites were transmitted from the tick saliva into the blood. B. A complete blood count would reveal a normal hematocrit level. C. Urethromycin should be administered as part of the treatment. Or D. Peripheral blood smear would reveal intraurethrocytic ring forms. Hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this patient's presentation is consistent with babesiosis. He was in the northeastern United States. He was bitten by a tick has evidence of infection with malaise and fever, and is manifesting symptoms of anemia, fatigue, and shortness of breath. To top it all off, the patient is asplenic, which means that his presentation would be pretty striking, as is the case here with this shortness of breath and fatigue. So with babesiosis in mind, the correct answer is D. Peripheral blood smear would reveal intraurethrocytic ring forms. Recall this Maltese cross in this red blood cell here, and it's also called a intraurethrocytic ring form. And this gold X on the red paint smear over here represents the Maltese cross within red blood cells on a peripheral blood smear. Now choice A is incorrect because tick saliva transmits sporozoites, not trophozoites. After entering red blood cells, sporozoites become trophozoites. Choice B is wrong because this patient's hematocrit would likely be low. While it's possible for Babesia to be present in the blood and be asymptomatic and not cause a big drop in hematocrit, a normal hematocrit is highly unlikely in a patient demonstrating signs of illness, especially an asplenic patient like this. So the fact that this suggests that hematocrit would be normal makes this the wrong answer. Finally, choice C is wrong because urethromycin, although a macrolide just like azithromycin, is not considered a good treatment for babesiosis. Azithromycin, a different macrolide, is part of a good regimen. And that should be all you need to know about babesia.